All right, let's talk about speed modeling and texturing and UVs and all that good stuff. Basically what this is going to be is eight videos comprised of almost exactly one hour and 45 minutes of that hour is going to be spent putting this thing together, what you see right here in ZBrush. And that's real time. So in 45 minutes, you should be able to make something like this. And then what we're going to do is decimate it down, throw it into Maya, game res it, soften our normals, throw that into Painter. And then in 10 minutes, a 10 minute texturing and rendering video, we go through, texture this thing up as you see it. Let's go ahead and hit tab so we can see it a little bit better. So texturing it up in Painter in... I don't know, five or six minutes, and then taking that, uh, doing some painter renders, and then doing some eye ray renders, which you can see here, to render these out. Of course, while we're in Painter, you can, let's hop out of eye ray here, you can go in here to File, Export Textures, and you can export these to Marmoset, Unreal, Unity, Keyshot, Octane, all these things in here have presets, you can make your own presets, all that good stuff. If you haven't watched it yet, watch my Painter Quick Start, it'll take you through all of this. But basically, from nothing, from a cube in ZBrush to an hour later having this ready to go into Engine is what this is all about. Now, it is one hour long, so disclaimer, I'm going to name this disclaimer, I go really, really fast. Not as fast as I can because I'm sitting here talking about what I'm doing, but this is for the intermediate to advanced user who's already gone through at the very least, Intro to ZBrush Part 1, which is free on my YouTube channel, all 47 videos. You can go to my Gumroad, download them for free, QBrush, download them for free, and ideally also Part 2 and Part 3 of Intro to ZBrush just to kind of get you all the way through ZBrush. So if you're watching this and going, oh my god, why are you going so fast? Slow down. Go. This movie is not for you. Go watch these first and watch this Substance Painter, Quick Start, Substance Designer, Quick Start if you want to, but definitely Intro to ZBrush, Substance Painter, Quick Start. You watch those first, then you can watch this one, and then you can see how fast and uh, how much you can get done in exactly one hour, real time, start to finish. So the first thing we're going to do actually isn't even in ZBrush, it's reference. So, you know, Google Images, however you want to grab your images. Real world images of the thing we're going to be making. So I'm going to go ahead and run Quadro, K-U-A-D-R-O. You can get it for free, it's just an uh, image reference viewer made by Louise Cruel. And if you want videos on how to use all the functionality of Quadro, look it up. It's on the internet. I'm going to go to Add Local Image just by right-clicking the icon there. I'm going to go to my folder, shift-click all of these images here. It's going to load them up for me. Now, of course, I have two monitors. I'm going to have one monitor with my reference images and one monitor I'm going to work on. So what I'm going to do is stop the video, put it on my other screen, and then we're going to load up the images over there. All right, so I'm going to drag all my images over here, and of course... If you had Quadro running on this screen, it would have thrown all the images up here, but it's no big deal. So I'm going to throw them over here, and these are, again, just all the images of the weapon we're going to make. And it's going to be this thing right here. And why are we making this thing? Same reason to make anything else, because it looks cool. So I'm going to go ahead and arrange these here. I'm just clicking on them and then rearranging the window size and then using my mouse wheel to scroll in and scroll out. Usually what I do is if I have three monitors, I'll put all of my left-facing ones so everything's pointing towards my middle monitor that I'm working on and then my other monitor I'll have all of my right facing ones of course if you want to in this case it's not going to work that well because the left side doesn't look like the right side but in an instance where both sides are symmetrical what you can do is control drag a copy of this off so if you just take an image and control drag you can drag off a copy right click flip horizontally and then you can have two versions I'm going to go ahead and right click close that image we don't really need that and I'm going to uh, just continue to arrange these and now that I'm done, I'm going to switch over to my other monitor. And really quickly, I'm going to right-click my Quadro and go to Save As. And we're going to go ahead and save this preset. So under the reference folder, I'll just call this. And I went ahead and saved that preset. So if I need to load this up later on, it's going to throw it right where I need them. And of course, you can save different presets for details, stock, trigger, material reference. You can do all sorts of different reference and save them all as presets. You can load them up as you go. So now that we have that, I'm going to go into ZBrush here. And like I said, I'm going to be cruising a little bit, so if you, you know, if you need to play a little catch up, go watch the Intro to ZBrush stuff, and we'll get you caught up. But in the meantime, I'm going to go to my reference, my reference folder for my Stevens here, and I'm just going to grab a side view. I'm sorry, of course, I want to be in Textures, Import, and then go grab my Stevens reference here. And I'm just looking for a decent side view. I believe this one will work fine. So I'm going to grab that side view there. I'm then going to go to Texture, click the image that I imported, add it to my spotlight, and now I've got a spotlight image here. I'm going to crank down that opacity just a bit and just kind of put that in place. Let's shrink it down just a little bit. Okay, so now that I've got that, I'm going to hit Z and then Shift Z to go ahead and drop out of that. Let's go ahead and add a cube 3D. 
And the very first thing I'm going to do is go to my floor and make sure I'm Z forward, Y up, and then hit X to go across X symmetry. Go to matte cap gray, turn my floor off. So I know that this is the front and I'm mirrored across this direction there. I'm going to go ahead and make it a poly mesh 3D. Go turn off project, turn off blur, go ahead and dynamesh this thing down. So now I've got a nice clean dynamesh. So I'm going to go to the side view here because remember this, oh, tap X again once you've made it um, a make poly mesh 3D. So you can go ahead and toggle on your transform, activate symmetry across the X axis, and then Z to bring back my image, Z to go into sculpting mode. I'm going to mask this side, invert that mask, shoot this over here, control, control, drag, and now I've got a nice dynamesh. Now I don't even need it that high resolution, so I'm going to drop this down temporarily to like 64, control, drag. Now I'm going to get out my clip curve, and let's just grab this side here. We're going to clip this back, tap Alt twice to get that sharp curve, and then tap Alt once to get a smooth curve here. And then this is just straight, and then we'll go ahead and clip this stuff out. I'm going to go ahead and ignore the strap for now. Alt-Tap. And if you want to, just control-drag as you go to keep dynameshing it down. And I'm also going to go here to Clip Circle and start clipping some of these out. Hold down Alt, and you want to keep that cross out of there so it doesn't do what it just did there. And then we'll go ahead and grab Clip Curve again, and we'll clip this back. Control drag, clip circle, and doesn't have to be perfect, but just representative of the overall shape. And you know what, really, a lot of this stuff is just going to be cylinders, so you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead and just clip this straight back right where those cylinders attach. Boom, control drag, and now we've got our basic shape. Hit shift Z, and we've got our basic shape. Now it's a little bit wide, so it's like, well, how wide do we make this thing? Well, for starters, you can probably just go to the side and just kind of shrink that down just a tad, but to get the absolute size, what we're going to do is go ahead and insert a cylinder. I have a custom insert mesh brush that I made. Um, you know, I'm, I, like I say, you know, I, still, I feel bad because I say these things, I'm like, oh, I should show you how to make an insert mesh brush. Go watch my other videos. Uh, so we're going to go do a quick hide point split hidden. I'll tap that cylinder. So now this cylinder is going to dictate how wide this is based on my reference images. All I'm going to do is shift Z. And you know what? Let's go ahead and save a view. I'm going to grab my document window over here, zap link properties. And let's go ahead and shrink this down, like so. So that's about the size and position that I would want, give or take. There we go. So I'm going to go ahead and save a custom one there. And now with my cylinder here, I can go to the side temporarily and just tap that middle point. I'm in scale mode. I can tap custom one to grab my view here. And I'm going to go scale this down from this view. And I'm going to grab the width of that top cylinder there with E. You know what? Good enough. And I'm going to just push this back. Okay, so we've got the top one here. And you know what? Let's go ahead and do Control Shift, drag off a copy, and we'll do that bottom one. And we'll just drag that straight down. Control Shift, drag, and now we've got a top one. We've got a bottom one. So we know that's those are the cylinder outsides. And so the gun will probably be, if I'm looking at my back three quarter reference, a little bit wider than these things here. So I'm going to Alt Tap that, Control Shift, and just make it a little bit wider. There we go. That is the approximate width. You know, it's looking a tiny bit wider. Give us a little bit of breathing room there. Okay, so there's the approximate width based on the cylinder size from the side view. And let's go ahead and flesh out the rest of this. So we know that the these are the bigger cylinders. The, long, the inside cylinder is going to be slightly smaller but much longer. So I'm going to hit Shift-Z. Shift-Z to get rid of that. And then these cylinders, I suppose I can keep them, you know what, just for the heck of it, what I'm going to do is these, I'm going to go to Auto Groups and isolate this one here, and then I'm going to duplicate that one. Now, when I ever I split anything off, what I like to do is hit Quick Save, and then go to Quick Save and just load up that last one just to kind of clear out my garbage. And so we've got this one here. So if I move this one out, W to move, there we go. I'm going to scale this down just a bit. There we go. So it's going to be a little smaller, and I'm going to go ahead and mask the end of that, invert that mask, hit W, go back to my custom view, Z to bring it back, Z again, W, and let's just move that one out. So that's going to be the barrel there, and then I'll go ahead and just drag a copy of this one off as well. Control Shift, and Shift Z, and now we can kind of, oh, perfect. 
Awesome. So I'm going to do a hide point, split hidden. So now we've got two separate ones there. We've got the top and we've got the bottom. Now for the middle fatter piece right here, I'm going to alt tap that one, duplicate this one off. Hold down control shift and let's go grab our slice and I'm just going to slice. Uh, there's rounded edges on that one. So I'm going to go ahead and build those in later. I'm just going to get the wood part here. So we're on our duplicate here. So I'm going to do uh, control shift and I'm just going to grab this middle part here, delete hidden. Go into my Z modeler brush, hover over an edge, and we're just going to do a close convex hole. And we'll go ahead and just cap these off here. And really quickly, I'm going to do a poly group by max by normals there. Okay, so in order to make this bigger, one of the things we can do is go and grab our inflate. And actually, I probably should have inflated this before. We capped them, but we'll see how it goes. So I've got this one here. You know what? Let's do Shift Z. We'll pop it back into place here, and I'll just grab my inflate, and I'll just inflate. We can also use um, Z Modeler to kind of push those out as well. But I'm going to clip these back to get rid of the metal parts. We're not ready for that yet. And there we go. So we got the wooden parts. We got this part. All this other stuff will fall into place in a bit, but it's a good place to start as any. You know what else I'm also going to do? I'm going to go ahead and clip back the uh, trigger guard here. Oops, alt tap that one and then just use my clip brush to kind of get rid of that trigger guard. I'm going to make that later when I'm working at a little bit of a higher resolution. There we go. So now we've got the overall shape blocked in. Uh, looks like we need to add, you know, I've got this thing kind of lined up. And I'm just going to take my move brush here. I'm just going to pull this out just a bit to match that. And then we'll maybe pull this end back just a little bit. You can see my precision modeling here. Okay, so we've got the overall shape. So I'm going to hit Shift Z and I'm going to go into solo mode here. We can kind of start narrowing this thing down. So I'm going to control drag and let's see what kind of resolution we're working on. Uh, if you don't like this, preferences, edit, turn off a line cursor to surface. And now we are dyna meshing here. And uh, okay, apparently it has some garbage left in here. So I'm going to go ahead and do a quick delete hidden, control drag. There we go. I'm going to raise this resolution just a bit. Let's say 128. Boom. So now when I'm looking at it from the top view, it looks like it actually curves down to about this point. So I'm just going to go in here and just do a slight curve here. Perfect. That's eh, a little steep. Let's, uh, let's go here and make it a little less steep there. There we go. Okay, so looking at the back view here, it goes like this, and it looks like it goes from wood right around here. So what I'm going to do is hit Control W, make this all one poly group. We're going to pop this back into place temporarily, Shift Z to bring everything back. And that wood line here, I'm going to hold down Control Shift, grab Slice, and we're just going to slice this piece off. Turn on Groups from a Dynamesh, Control Shift, Control Shift A, and then I'm going to split this piece off into its own poly group. Quick save, comma key, grab it. Okay. So now we've got this as its own piece here. Let's um, bring everything else back. Shift Z to get out of that. And what probably would have been smarter for me to do is keep this together until this part was resolved. But you know what? I think that'll actually be OK. So we're going to have to do is soften this transition here because it looks like it stays all the way soft all the way down the profile of this weapon. So I'm going to take my trim dynamic brush and just go ahead and trim the softness back. now. You know, why aren't you rebuilding this and beveling this? Because I don't even know if I like this gun. I want to get it all the way in before I make the decision that I want to make this perfectly. And when I go to make it perfectly, I can bring this into Fusion 360 or Z Remodel it or Max or Maya or whatever. Uh, the point is, I'm not going to sit here and spend a whole lot of time on something that may or may not get approved. So, okay, so this side here looks like this side stays pretty sharp, actually. And then as you continue back, it slowly... So it's sharp, and then it kind of transitions into a little bit of a fatter piece here. And I'm going to go ahead and raise this up, let's say 250-ish. There we go. Okay, we'll just keep using Trim Dynamic to soften this transition here. Beautiful. Nice. Now, of course, if you want to clean this up a little bit more, you can go into your H Polish brush and do a little bit of that. Hold down Alt, but I don't really care about that right now. So the other part we have to do is the rubber grip here. So control W again, control shift, and let's see if we can even see that. I'm going to crank up the color here just a bit so we can kind of see a little bit better. Okay, so yeah, just that little rubber piece there. So Z, control shift, we can slice that. I'm going to give myself a little bit more breathing room than what's in the reference image. 
And that looks really ugly anyways. So I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. So Control W, make it all on polygroup. And it's got just a slight bow at the end here. So I'm just going to put that in. And then the rubber fills out the rest of the part here. Groups is already turned on. Control Shift A, Control W, group, split, hidden. And now this is all one piece. And I'm going to go ahead and turn off groups for all this stuff just because that can kind of bite me in the butt later on. All righty. Uh, now that we're doing a lot of splitting, let's go ahead and do another quick save here. Okay, so we've got this piece here we need to resolve. So we're looking from the back view here. Curves in. I'm going to raise the resolution on this one a bit too. Let's go up into the 250s-ish. And just slightly we're going to move this corner down to kind of meet that bottom piece here. Then Alt, or Alt H polish. And then in here it actually looks like this metal goes all the way back. So what I'm going to do, or goes back a little further. So let's see. I'm going to take this piece here. And let's say it goes back about this far. Let's hit Control W. I'm going to duplicate this subtool. Control Shift, delete hidden. And let's go ahead and Z remesh this part really quickly. So geometry, Z remesher, we'll just do a Z remesh half, depth size down to zero. And before we do that, let's go ahead and masking, border, invert, deformation, and polish. A little bit better. Zero measure half. <laughs> Oops, that's kind of a weird shape, isn't it? Zero measure half. I think that'll work. So I'm going to move this out. So I've got a nice cleaner shape. I'm going to use my Z mother brush, Q mesh, poly group all up. Hold down shift down. So I'm going to use this as to punch through here. Let's go ahead and do a quick groups by normals, and then we'll take this one and we'll just punch that straight up. Okay, so. I'm going to duplicate this one off now, so duplicate, and we'll do a crease polygroups as well, so we can go ahead and subdivide this up, make it look super nice if we want to. Hold down shift, and now it's already at the top, so I'm going to take this one, throw it up at the top here, and I'm going to merge these down. This one here, I'm actually going to go down here, delete higher, and Q mesh brush, hold down shift, and just put that right towards the top there. So when I merge these down, dynamesh those together, and then I'm going to take this one, shoot it to the top, take this one, shoot it to the top. And then I'm going to push this one down, Control W, make it all one, uh, make a cutout Boolean. Merge that down, Control Drag, and now we've got a little cutout in here. Again, not beautiful. Let's raise the resolution up just a tiny bit. But um, good enough. And then this one, raise the resolution up a tiny bit. All right, so now we've got the metal part back here that goes back. And then on the side here, looks like there is a slight transition here. So I'm going to clip those. Good enough, good enough. These match up. Good enough. Okay, so I'm going to hit Shift-Z again, and I'm going to throw this here. And let's go ahead and paint on some of those details so I know where to kind of pop some of these pieces out. RGB on my standard brush. Go ahead and just paint through. Let's turn off polyframe here. Paint my details on. Shift-Z. And then I'm going to dumb this down a little bit. Color, fill object. And it looks like it does go straight across, then it kind of breaks that shape. So what I'm going to do is mask right where the shape is with my mask here. And then I'm going to go to this side. I'm going to hit X to go out of X symmetry. So we're breaking symmetry now. Control tap to soften that, and then Control Alt to tighten it back up. Control W, and I'm going to turn off my polyframe here so you can kind of see what we're doing here. Control Shift, Control Tap. Invert that W, and uh, you know what? Let's since it is a mass, let's clean this up a little bit. I got a macro here that's going to do that polish my borders for me, and if we want to, we can kind of straighten these out just a bit. Again, I don't really care that much, but while I'm here, okay. So again, push this in, Control Shift, pop that straight back, and then model these in here. And you know what? I'm going to push this back a little bit farther because what I'm going to do now is that, I mean, that looks fine. But I'm going to duplicate this off, isolate this one, delete hidden, and we'll do another Z remesh here. Say half, depth size down to zero, half, 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 cool. And then I'm going to Z modeler this out, Q mesh polygroup all. And that'll be our metal piece here. We'll do a quick crease polygroup and we'll just make this so that it goes all the way through. Okay, so that's our metal piece there. We can play around with the details on that later on. 
and we'll do the trigger guard next. So for the trigger guard here, I'm going to go into my custom subtool thing, M, cube, drag that right on there, hide point split hidden, alt tap it, and I'm going to crank the resolution up on this quite a bit. So, because I'm getting a little bit detailed here, so shift Z, bring that back in, and now I can make this fit that profile a little bit. Cool. And let's go ahead and, well, let's, let's shrink it down enough. So from the back view, it looks like, and I don't really have a good back view. I'm using the back three cord. Let's do a quick mirror and weld. Go across the x-axis with my transform there. Okay, so we've got that there. And you know what? I don't want to sit here and kind of like do this not zoomed in. So what I'm going to do is just, again, paint this detail right on there. Shift Z. And now I can go into solo mode here. Let's clip this back. So clip this back, and you know, just in case this isn't enough resolution, ah, no, it should be. And then we'll alt tap once, alt tap again, and we'll just kind of cut this out. And if I was being smarter, what I would do is turn on poly groups with this clip brush, which maybe I will do in a second. Let's do that. So hold down control shift, go grab a poly group. So as I'm clipping, it's giving me a new poly group. And I'm going to use that in a bit. So now what I can do is if I go here, you're going to see a bunch of poly groups here. Control shift to isolate both sides and then control shift to just grab these poly groups. Let's go ahead and do a delete hidden. And that should be a pretty clean slice. If it's not, I'm going to temporarily take off just a f little edge here and then control shift. Let's do control W and then do a slice. There we got to clean up that edge for me. Isolate this. Delete hidden mirror and weld. Let's go mirror, mirror and weld. And now what we can do is another quick Z remesher half. And if it gives you any trouble, just do a fix mesh. Try it again. Hmm, still not going to do it. You know what we're going to do? Z plugin, decimation master. Let's drop this down to like 30k. Preprocess. Let's go 20k. There we go. And then just keep hitting Z mesh half, half, half. Let's go ahead and straighten this out. Slice it. Delete hidden. Anyway, nice and simplified. I'm going to isolate this, delete hidden. So now I can go out of solo mode. I can use my Q mesh, polygroup all, and we'll give this some thickness here. And then I'm going to go ahead and flip. Good enough. And then another uh, insert mesh. And we'll go ahead and grab a cube. Bottom of here. Uh, we can just do it here too. Right down the middle. Split hidden. Move this into place here. Mass the bottom, invert that, move this down, and you know I could pull some points around if I want. Let's go ahead and bring our document back, custom one. Still too small. You know what? I've got the basic idea behind this. I just need the basic shape. So what I'm going to do is just kind of basically get this thing in, and then go in here, insert multiple edge loops. We'll just drag a couple edge loops in there. And then I'm going to do move infinite depth points. And let's kind of move these things around. Okay. Control W. We can do a crease tolerance here. Hit dynamic. And then maybe scale this in just a bit. I don't know how wide those are supposed to be. Um, looks like it's just a tiny bit narrower than the trigger guard here. And I'm going to do a quick. Alt tap this one, and I'm going to do group by normals, and then I'm just going to do a polish by features just to kind of smooth out my lines there. There we go. So let's see what else I need to do. I'm going to go ahead and alt tap these ones and just change my crease tolerance down so I can put on my dynamic subdivisions here and kind of see what these things are going to look like. Okay, so now this thing needs a separate piece that's also rounded out, and it's going to be metal. So what I'm going to do is let's go ahead and duplicate this off, and we'll turn on polyframe here, and the metal is going to be about, let's say, that thick. 
and I don't need this end cap here because we're going to replace it with something rounded. So I'm going to go to delete hidden. And then we're going to close convex hole with the spline and this pull out. And then we can kind of just move these back and forth to kind of dictate how rounded we want that. And it looks like out of this side comes another cylinder. So what I'm going to do is control shift and we'll clip these back here. And that'll be like the start of my, and you know what? Let's turn off polygroup here. I want to be a little more in control of that. So now we can put a cylinder in here. And if we want to have that kind of embedded for us, what we can do is isolate this. Control W, let's do a little transpose modeling. E, Control Shift, bring that in just a little bit. Control Shift, pull that back. Control W, and we'll just do a crease tolerance. And I want to crease this edge. We're going to go to crease, edge loop complete. Bada bing, bada boom. And then we'll just use this as our new cylinder. So again, I'm going to duplicate this off. I'm already in solo mode. Let's see if we can't just paint these polygons I like. And then control shift, delete hidden, alt Q mesh, polygroup all. And then um, just pull those out. Oh, you know, we've already got this one here. Let's go ahead and just move this one back. And we've got this new cylinder here that fits right in there. Mask, invert, pull it out. Perfect. So now on this rounded part here, we don't need this back end, so I'm going to get rid of that. Delete hidden. Let's go close, convex hole, and I need to have that flat. And I don't like that poly group. There we go. So here we're going to move this out. And then I'll go ahead and duplicate this, and we'll do a quick mirror across Z, W. It's way back there. Get over here. There we go. And I guess we can go ahead and merge these two down. So mask, invert, move. There we go. Now if we want to kind of put a slight bevel in here, of course we can do that. I'm going to alt tap this one and we'll do a quick bevel edge loop complete and then same for this one. And Since I've already set those I can go ahead and do this one just tapping and this one just tapping. Okay so we've got the metal part here and we've got the cylinders here. You know what let's go ahead and get rid of this one and I'm just going to take this one all the way back. Boom. And then we'll go ahead and crease this one. Dynamic on. Let's go ahead and crease PG with a crease tolerance. Same for these ones. There we go. You know what I was thinking? That's not even close to the reference. I'm going to alt tap this one and I'll mask the end of this one and then we're just going to move this back because it only goes that far. So now this piece up here I'm going to treat just like I did with the trigger here. So I'm going to go to grab my trusty cube again, put another cube on there, split that off, shift D, move this up like so, and we'll go ahead and go back here. So now this one I'm going to put right in here. Now it's going to go around this and then make this interesting shape. So I'm going to go ahead and make the interesting shape first and then the rounded part we'll just grab from the cylinder later on. So again I'm going to just crank that dynamesh resolution up no, maybe not that far. There we go. And then I go ahead and paint this detail on. And this thing needs to be a little thinner than that. So it's going to go around that and then kind of clamp down around here. Let's say about thereabouts. And this is going to be a cylinder sticking into there. So I'm going to go ahead and clip that out. And let's drop that resolution a little bit more. Make it a little bit more responsive. So now this is going to be like the miniature one. And then this one is going to be the bigger one. And we'll give it a little bit of space to kind of breathe here. I'm going to mask this and then invert that and just pull that up a bit. 
Now I don't need this on anymore, so I'm going to get rid of that. So we got that shape. Now let's go ahead and tap this one. And we got two things we need to do. We need to go ahead and flesh out this piece here and then also put on top of that another piece with a bunch of holes in it. So let's go ahead and do this one. I'm going to duplicate this one off. Hold down Control Shift. Hit Shift D. And then we're going to go to Slice, Polyframe. And it needs to be a, the width of this. Let's go ahead and do that. Isolate this, delete hidden. And it's going to be a little shorter. Delete hidden. And now we need to beef this up a little bit, so I'm going to Q mesh polygroup all. I'm going to crease polygroup. Control D, Control D. I'm going to shoot this to the top, shoot this one to the top, merge them down, blend them together, and there we go. We got that end piece here. If you want to, you can. Kind of smooth out a little bit. Let's go ahead and clip. All right, we got that end piece there. And actually, looking at it zoomed in, what I'm going to do is take these and then kind of push these down a little bit. And I'm going to actually add. Let's go ahead and mask this here. Looks like I'm missing a piece there. There we go, perfect. So it's got a little bit of room to breathe here. And then I need to go ahead and add a cylinder in here. Let's see if we can't just use Clip Circle. That'll work. And of course, along in here, you're going to have a place for a screw, a screw, and another screw here. And below that screw, it looks like from the front, I'm going to mask this all out. It kind of comes in just a little bit underneath that screw. Let's grab our clip curve, something like that. And of course, we need to make this a little bit wider. We can simply just mask that, widen it out a bit, push that up just a tad. There we go, good enough. And while I'm thinking about it, let's go ahead and alt tap this one. And we'll go ahead and grab into this, do a little more transpose modeling. Do a quick uncrease all, and then crease tolerance, dynamic. There we go. And probably this won't be showing through, so I'm going to go ahead and just clip circle this back. There we go. Now it looks like on the bottom here, there's going to be a hole in here, so I'm going to go to brush, insert, cylinder, drag out a big brush, and then hold down well, let's see, hold down Alt while I do that. Well, if it starts doing that, Control. Now hold down Alt. Move this. We can turn on Double temporarily, see where the heck it is. And we can go ahead and scale this down a little bit, maybe. Okay, so we poked a hole through it there. So now let's do another one. I'm going to use my, let's do a cylinder, a 12 cylinder, but we got to use the one that's pointing towards me here, the mid cylinder, so we can just drag that out. Hide point split hidden. Let's move this up. And we'll stick that right in there. Quick mirror and weld. Ghost transparency. Let's go ahead and do a little loop here. So it looks like it kind of has a loop that comes out. And then Control Shift drag another copy here. Let's go into solo mode. And I'm going to take these end caps off. Delete hidden. And now I'm going to bridge. I'm going to use my mouse for this. We're going to do bridge two holes. We're going to do a circle, optimal curvature, optimal resolution from here to here. Good enough. And you know what? This thing also shows up towards the back here because these are what the little uh, carrying strap gets connected to. And it also looks like, oh, it's hard to tell. You know what? I'm just going to kind of noodle this around a little bit. I'm going to go with my clay brush here. 
transparency and I'm gonna give it a little bit of a place to go let's turn off RGB for the clay brush here and then we'll just put a little cylinder in here happy little cylinder hide point split hidden there we go so that'll go through there and we'll just do a quick crease dynamic there we go okay so we got those two pieces here and we got another big piece here so I'm gonna alt tap this one Shift D, another duplicate, and you know what, let's bring our concept back, concept, our reference image back, and let's go ahead and do another slice, and another, you know, it goes out further, but I'm going to go ahead and just slice that piece there, and let's go into solo mode, I'm just going to take this middle piece here, if I can grab it, alright, delete hidden, and I don't even need this bottom part here, let's go ahead and delete hidden on that, and actually, let's delete a little bit less. All right, that should be okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to Q-Mesh Polygroup All. We're going to get this piece going. And if we do need to make this end piece a little bit longer, let's do Q-Mesh Single Poly on both sides. And then just pull these in and let's rotate them just a tiny bit. Good enough. Okay, so we got this piece here. We'll do a quick crease. Grease by normals too if you want to. And then control D. And let's mask this part here. And we'll continue this. This looks like it overlaps quite a bit here. Actually, before I control D, I'm going to need to do some uncreasing here in a second. I'm looking at the shapes. So I'm going to pull this forward here. So now, if I hit D, it's going to give me a preview here and let's see if we can't just uncrease these edges here by holding down alt and then holding down alt and it is uncreasing them but man it's giving me too long of a transition so I'm just going to go in here to insert single edge loop and I'm just going to pull an edge loop towards there and I'm going to pull another edge loop towards there there we go nice soft transition so now, we got this top piece, and we need to make it full of holes. How are you going to sub-D model a thing full of holes? That's going to be a pain to uh, get the resolve. And yeah, I'm not going to do that. So what I'm going to do is, let's go, let's make sure I don't have dynamic turned on. I'm going to control D, control D, control D, and let's just make a big old dynamesh out of this. Maybe not that big. Okay, good enough. Now what I'm going to do is go to brush, insert, no, let's go grab this custom one here, we'll do an insert 16, I'm going to drag that on the side here, make sure that they go all the way through, so this is going to be my take the longest one, because i got to set these up just right, because after I get these set up, let's turn on LSIM here, there we go, so once I get these set up, everything else should just fall into place. So I'm going to move this forward just a tad. Okay, and we'll do W, Control Shift, and then we'll rotate these. Make sure those poke all the way through. Shift Z, bring my concept back, and we'll push this back just a little bit. Okay, those seem fine. So what I'm going to do is Control Shift, grab all of these, mask them out, invert that, and then control shift and just move these forward. It looks like they stay pretty steady. So let's go ahead and do another one. And another one. I'm just control clicking on those to mask them for me. All right. I didn't need that many, so I'm going to go ahead and grab these ones here. Control Shift A, delete hidden, and one more. Beautiful. So I'm going to grab all these, split them off, and then I'm going to do a crease tolerance. Control D to make them nice and smooth. And then grab this thing, move it above. Control W, Control W, merge this one down, make that a subtractive. Beautiful. Smooth brush. Let's make that smooth stronger. 
Perfect. Actually, looks like I should have stopped right when I got to this point. So let's go ahead and grab that. Let's go split that off. Grab all of these. Delete those. Merge them down again. Much better. And let's go fix this trigger really quickly. Trigger guard. Let's keep groups and then do another half. I just want fewer points to kind of deal with here. Perfect. So now I'm going to mask this one here. And these are going to kind of curve inwards. And I guess I can go ahead and mask these points. I'll invert that. And then we'll go ahead and clip these up to this point here. Good enough. And then same thing for this side. Using my move brush there to kind of put these all in the same place. And then we'll just go ahead and mask these points out, invert that, and then we'll just clip them up. These work a little bit better. If you need more resolution, you know, you can feel free to, I mean, quick and dirty way just to go more resolution. And if you want to make sure you don't dynamesh these, you know, you can always turn dynamesh off. Okay, so we got that shape a little bit better. I just got a few more things to do. I'm going to alt tap this one. I'm going to control, I'm going to mask this area out because it looks like right in front of here. Control tap to invert that. These get a little bit wider. Go X, W, pull this out. And need to reclip these back. Perfect. Actually, not perfect. I need to go back here and just reclip these back. And I should probably stop saying perfect. Good enough, let's say. Okay, so now we got this thing here. I'm going to go do another cube, and we'll just drop that right on there. Split that off, and haven't done a quick save in a while. And we'll just reload this one. Okay, and then W. Ah, mirror and weld so I can have something to click on. There we go. Move this back ish. Move this down. So it's a little thin piece here. Actually, looks like it's up quite a bit. Turn on polyframe here. We'll go to insert single edge loop and we'll give it a little bump. Actually, before we give it a little bump, because it goes back to flat, let's go ahead and insert another single edge loop where it stops bumping. And then this comes here, and then it stops bumping here. So then this thing bumps up, like so. And this whole thing gets embedded a little bit more. And this is actually going to curve. So I'm going to mask this piece out here. And then we'll just move that down along the same profile there. All right, we'll do a quick crease, dynamic. Oops, not that tolerant. There we go. And it looks like, again, I need to insert another single edge loop just to kind of round that shape out a little bit better. All right, I think we're ready to detail this thing up. So I'm going to dynamesh these at slightly higher resolutions, maybe. So I can go through here and kind of just smooth out some of these kinks. Eh, it looks like it's pretty high dynamesh. I just need to go in and smooth it a little bit. And this wood here is pretty smooth, so I'm just going to smooth the heck out of these transitions. They're not sharp at all. And then same thing when it transitions back to that rubber piece here. So these are very, very soft transitions. And then it kind of hardens up on this one. And then these are also very soft, it looks like. Use our move brush, put that back in there. And I'm guessing this rubber piece here, it doesn't, I can't really tell from the reference, but I'm going to guess it's either slightly bigger, slightly uh, smaller, so I'm going to tuck this back in just a tad and then kind of smooth this out a bit, I think. There we go. That'll be our rubber piece there. And details. So let's see what we got. We got this thing here. I'm going to smooth this out a bit, redynamesh, and bring our reference back. Let's pop it into place. And for here, again, we can just go ahead and paint on where our details go. And we'll dumb that down a bit. And we're going to put in 
holes where these things should be, and it looks like we have very small holes here, so I'm going to crank that intensity up, and we'll just poke some very small holes in here, and looks like they got simple screws here. So I'm going to go brush, insert, BI, industrial parts, and we'll grab a flat head, and we'll just plop those right in there. Control shift, control shift, ta uh, control tap to mask those. We'll push those in a little bit, and of course we'll do a high point split hidden, and then we'll do D to dynamic preview, and we'll go ahead and crease this one as well. Perfect. Now for the other side, uh, we did have X turned on because I forgot to turn it off, but I don't think this other side looks like that. So what I'm going to do, well, you know, maybe it does. Actually, no, it doesn't. So what I'm going to do, really quickly, I'm going to turn this off. And I don't have a side view of this side. But what I can do is turn off X symmetry, turn off my poly paint. I'm just going to use H polish to kind of get rid of those things here. And now I'm just going to kind of eyeball. Looks like there's a screw hereabouts. And then if you you know if you want to make a thing, let's make a thing. Let's go to our standard brush. Actually, we'll clone this off. Give it a drag dots with an alpha. So there we go. We made a thing. So now we can be a little bit more concise and accurate. Ooh. And focal shift. There we go. So we've got a thing here, and then a thing here, and then another thing here. Good enough. And then it looks like these flat heads are actually flat not bulging out, but you know what? That's okay. I'll re-grab that, pull that out, control shift, control sh actually, let's scale this one down just a little bit. Now if I wanted to be very, very precise, obviously I would just copy the ones over from the other side. If I wanted to be really precise, I'd probably be taking this into Fusion 360 eventually, but I'm not there yet. Again, there's a block in this out really quickly. Split hidden, dynamic, there we go. And then I don't need these two, so I can go out of X. Whoops, that's not what I wanted. There we go. All right, the only thing we're missing is a little piece here. So what I'm gonna do actually, let's go ahead and just duplicate this off, push this back. And instead of slice, what I'm gonna do is trim curve, and I'm just gonna trim this down to just a block. There we go. That looks like, you know what, we can do H polish, get rid of that again. And it looks like this just goes up into here and then goes down here and then control shift, control alt tap and it does a little funny shape like that. And I don't think it's supposed to be that wide probably something like there. And I'm going to preview these a little bit more. Alright, so this thing is pretty well blocked out, I'm thinking. If we wanted to put a little bit more detail onto this thing, what I can do... You know what, let's just go ahead and just dynamesh this thing. I'm having a hard time telling what's going on in here in some of these things, so I'm just going to kind of do... You know what, let's use our new brush we made. There we go. So it's got a thing like that, maybe, and then it's got another thing like this, maybe. Any of you Stevens shotgun experts can weigh in here if you'd like. I don't know. Something like that. And I think this thing needs to be creased. Go ahead and do a crease edge loop complete here and here. And we can go ahead and mask and pull that out a little bit more. All right. Pretty decent so far. I think that's good enough. Oh, wait. This front part here also needs some flat heads. I'll go ahead and split those off. And now I can kind of push these in a bit. Cool. All right, so I'm getting kind of tired of messing around with this thing. So I want to put it into Painter and see if it'll actually work and hold up. 
and get the point across, which is, is this a weapon that I want to use? So the first thing I'm going to do is decide if I want to go ahead and just combine this all into one object, decimate it down, export that as my game res, or do I want functionality like do I want to decimate the trigger and then the trigger guard and then the this little thing here. So if I do that all separately, what I can do later is, of course, UV them separately and texture them separately so that I can have some animation control. But since I'm just trying to get a look of the model down, what I'm going to do is export this all as one object. But first what I need to do is give this thing some material IDs. So let's go ahead and grab our color menu here. And I'm going to start with red and I'm just going to start from the top. We've got 21 subtools. So I'm going to go here and uh, I'm going to do my hotkey for my fill. I'm just going to go through and start filling these things. So we'll do an orange and then a yellow and then a green. Now if you do decimate these all separately, you don't have to go through this process. You can just do fills in, um, oops, you can do fills in Painter based on Vert. Well, I guess I did want to keep that. Come on ZBrush, keep up. And then purple for this one. And then magenta for the next one. And then background to red. Let's do a light red. And then do a light yellow. And then do a light green. Alternatively, what you alternatively what you could do is also just make them all a separate polygroup and then do poly paint from polygroup, and it'll probably get you a pretty decent result. I'm just kind of spacing out my colors here to make sure that my masks don't get confused when I go into Painter. And you can also use your own card that you can bring in and give them very, very precise mathematical values, but I'm just winging it. Okay, so there's all my pieces here. And it looks like I missed one here. It's because I had a mask here, so let's go ahead and select that color by hitting C. And then filling. And there we go, bring everything back. So now that you have everything showing and everything has got its own material ID, what I'm gonna do is do a merge visible. Go ahead and select that, and you're going to see some of these things that get colored. And they also need to be subdivided instead of just dynamically subdivided. So I'm going to go ahead and select all those pieces that need to be non-dynamically subdivided. I'm going to turn off the poly paint temporarily here. Split those out temporarily. And you shouldn't be in here. Now I'm going to control D on all these, make them nice and sharp, and then merge them back down. Let's turn on our poly paint here. And then for these things that I didn't quite get, I'm just going to do shades of gray here. So we'll do a light gray for this one, and then we'll grab this one, and this one is actually going to be the same color as this one. So we'll just fill that, and these will be the same material too. So we can kind of start simplifying some of these. So C to select that color, fill, and then it looks like we got the trigger here. Let's go ahead and give that a darker gray. All right, everything's looking good. And now what I'm gonna do is Dynamesh all these together, turn off project, turn off blur, keep my color on and hit Dynamesh. And as you can see, I didn't lose a uh, whole lot of resolution in here. It looks pretty decent. So I'm going to go ahead and export this as my high. And now I'm actually going to Dynamesh this down to a lower resolution. And I'll just keep dumbing it down because basically what I'm going to do is go ahead and go to Z plugin, preprocess current. Let's see how that looks. Let's do 16 enter, decimate current. Looks fine to me for game res. Of course, you want an even lower res game res. Just continue to knock that down as much as you want. Um, we can look at our polygons here. Good enough for me. Let's go ahead and do an export. We'll do Stevens low. And you can go ahead and do your UVs in ZBrush. I'm going to use Maya really quickly and soften my normals in there. Go to File, Import, and we'll go ahead and grab our low res here. And if that ever does, it gives you an error when you import the low res, go ahead and re import your low res into ZBrush. It'll clear up any stray verts, and then you can go to Geometry, Fix Mesh, and then try re importing it into Maya. But this one looks like it worked fine. I'm going to do a quick 
unlock my normals, set them to face, and then soften all the edges here. So this will be my game res, and I need to do one more thing. Windows UV Editor, and we'll do a quick automatic UVs. And let's go ahead and look at these here. Uh, I can rearrange some of this stuff, but you know what? This will be fine. Good enough. And then delete by height, type history, freeze transformations, everything's looking good. So I'm going to go ahead and just export, re-export this back out as my low. And I'm going to launch up Painter. I'm going to go File, New. We're going to select my low res from my bake. And we don't have any images to bake because we're going to go ahead and do that in Painter. Let's go ahead, uh, DirectX is fine. Hit OK. There's our game res. We're going to go to our texture settings, bake textures, load up our high res here. Now we don't have to do anything fancy. Now if we had, uh, go to my YouTube channel if you want to see the process of actually, go to my YouTube playlist, go to the Reptile Creature series, and in here in that playlist you will see multi-baking in Painter from ZBrush. So it'll show you how to bake or export multiple objects using FBX in ZBrush to name them and then name them again so that the painter low reses can match the painter high reses and then you can do baking individual assets without getting errors. Uh, since this is only one asset I'm just going to go ahead and just bake it straight up 2048 all the defaults are probably fine we'll take a quick look you know we'll up that dilation, dilation just a bit. Alright everything looks good if you go here to your textures you're going to see all the textures that have baked. If you search by initial, that'll go ahead and show you. Here's the ambient occlusion that baked, here's the material ID, the normal map, and all that stuff's already plugged in right where I want it. So let's go ahead and texture this guy up. Uh, first place we can start is just with here under the materials. I'm going to just do a steel search. We got a steel rusty. I'm going to drag that in here. We don't need that layer. So now I've got like a steel rusty. Looks pretty good. If we want to chew up these edges just a little bit, let's go ahead and do a fill layer. And we'll do steel rough. And I'm going to do, let's go ahead and name it. And I'm going to right click, add a black mask, right click, add a generator, go over to our generators. And we do have MG middle edgeware still over here. We can go to our smart masks and drag some of those in if we want, but middle edgeware work fine. So now we got still rough showing through a little bit. So let's go ahead and crank these levels down a bit. Now you're probably being like, well, why does he have all of this metalware everywhere? Why don't you assign it to a certain place? Well, this is going to be my base layer, and everything else is going to be stacked on top of this. So if this is fine. I'm going to go to my still properties here, and we'll darken up that color just a bit. All right. Okay, so on top of here, let's start with wood, I suppose. We can call this wood, another fill layer, and we'll go look for wood over here. American, that'll work. So now you're going to see, because I've got pretty crappy UVs, because I just did an auto UV here, I got some bad seams, but not to fear, we can do triplanar projection, and that'll kind of even out some of that noise for me. And as I pass the light over here, uh, the height might be a little bit much, so I'm going to go to my height menu here. I'm going to crank that down just a tad, just kind of dumb that height down a bit. And let's go make this a little bit darker. Perfect. So now this wood does go on two places. It goes on here on the stock and then up here on this little grippy thing here. So let's go ahead and right click, add mask color selection, and we'll go ahead and pick this one. And we'll go ahead and pick this one. So now it's isolated to those two spots. Let's do a light metal here. I'm going to do another fill layer. We'll go ahead and call it light metal. Mental, whatever. Let's do another steel. We'll do another steel rough. And we'll keep it light. And I'm going to do massive color selection, pick color here. And I'm going to duplicate this off. And we'll call this screw. And I don't want the screws to be that light. So I'm going to go in here, dumb down that color just a bit. Add mask color selection, which will override the original, and then I'm just going to tap these screws here. And you know what? Maybe even these little things down here. Oh, we need rubber back here. That shouldn't be metal, so we'll just go ahead and do... And of course, I can just drag these out. I don't know why I keep renaming these things. You can just drag them out from here. No rubber in there. We got, oh, we got some rubber in here. Let's do rubber dry. I'm going to drag out a smart material, and I'll move rubber dry up here. 
add mass color selection, we'll pick this one, and you know what, let's see what we got going on in rubber dry. Rubber base, it's filled with the cloud layer, I'm going to go ahead and make it not quite so dry if I can. And I'll turn that rubber worn color off. So now it's a little bit too shiny. Something like that. Good enough. So let's see if I missed anything major here. Not really. So let's do a little bit of detail work on here. I'm going to make a new fill layer. We'll call this oil. And oil, I just want to do some roughness here. So I'm going to make it really shiny. Add a black mask. And in this mask, I'm just going to use my regular old brush here. I'm going to drop my flow down. And wherever... Oh, I need to reset my Wacom settings. Hold on. Might as well record this too. So I don't want double click back here. I want middle click. Thank you. So now I can pan around in here. So wherever there's going to be like stuff that needs to be oiled, like screws and stuff, I can go ahead and drop some oil right on there. I'm going to oil this up. Put some oil around here. And this wood, we can go ahead and kind of chew or dirty this wood up as well. So what I'm going to do is go grab this wood. I'm going to make a new folder. I'm going to drop this wood in it. And instead of doing a color selection down here for the wood, let's go ahead and remove mask. I'm going to right click this folder and do mask with color selection. So now that everything goes in, that goes in this folder will be masked out in the wood area. So now I can go ahead and do another fill. We'll call this wood oil. And we'll go ahead and give it, um, you know what, let's hide it temporarily. And we'll just do a color picker just to grab a dark brown. Turn it back on. Add a black mask. Let's grab our, or one of the dirt brushes here. We'll drop that flow down quite a bit. And you can go ahead and add some kind of woodware in the wood area wherever that might end up. Oops, I need to add another color selection here. That one. And we'll do one more thing maybe. Let's do a roughness breakup. And again, it's just going to be roughness all over the entire object. I'm going to go down here to procedurals. And we'll go look at our grunge maps. Grunge 10 looks pretty cool. We'll drop that on there. I was going to break up that surface just a bit. And I'm going to take this roughness and drop that down so it just kind of does a little hint of breakup. And we can tile it maybe a little bit less. That'll work. Now if you want to get fancy, you can go ahead and, you know, go here in here and do text with the height. Um, I don't feel like typing any text out, but what I can do is... I know I downloaded some alphas, stencils, from the Pixelogic website. So let's do 853 and 854, and I'm just going to drag these right into my alphas tab. Now let's import them for current session only, and I can narrow it down by alphas. So now I've got this alpha here. I'm going to do another fill layer, and this one will just be, we'll call it engraving, and it's only going to be height information. So we've got the height, everything but height turned off, and we'll go ahead and do a black mask, and we'll go ahead and make that height down a little bit. So on the engraving here, we're just going to use a regular old brush. We'll do default hard and then the alpha shape, we're going to go ahead and bring in this thing. So now we can go on here and stamp in our uh, detail if we'd like. We can go to this side. We can replace this alpha with this one. And go through here, stamp this on. Now if it's like, oh, we stamped it in too hard, no big deal. Go back here. Change your height. You can even bump it out if you want to. It's up to you. So that's why I like thing, doing things a little bit more non-destructively in Painter later on for super detail stuff like this so I don't have to go back to my sculpt originally. So let's say that looks pretty sweet. I'm digging this. So what I'm going to do is go to Display Settings, Activate. We'll turn on Anti-Aliasing. We'll go to Viewer Settings. Turn on Shadows. We'll do High Intensive Computation. We'll go to High. And I'm going to go ahead and kill these menus here. Kind of frame this up here and get a really nice render in Painter. Or you would, alternatively, what you could do is do um, an eye ray render. And we'll open up Dome. And we'll just turn on clear color so I don't have to see that background there. So now we're doing an eye ray render. We can still use Shift 
and right click to kind of pass that light around. This gives us a little bit more realism in here. Let that resolve a bit. And of course you can go up here. You can change your min samples and your max samples to see how long it's going to take to render. It'll just continue to render nicer and nicer as it goes. You can save your render. You can share it on ArtStation. You can go over here and do change your environment settings. You can go down here. We've got our post effects enabled so we can go ahead and like say do a color correction and maybe make it a little more contrast if you want to. We can go and vignette it a bit. We can do all sorts of cool things but you know and, and you know you saw how fast it was to kind of just concept this thing out see if it looks right throw it into iray or grab a painter view painter render looks fine you get an idea of what the weapon is and it went really really super fast so you know no reason to go all in you know hours and hours and hours on a project doing the perfect uh, thing just to get it in and realize you know oh we don't actually want that one or that wasn't as cool as I thought or it's not gonna work